church Bible study. Uh, it's good to have Brother Radish on the other line with us tonight. And I'm going to see if he can go ahead and pray for us. Amen. Uh, appreciate Brother Radish. He's been a good friend. Amen. Uh, I was thinking today about uh, about our new president and vice president. And you know what it reminded me of? Ahab and Jezebel. I think whatever Ahab wants, Jezebel said, I'll get it for you. <laughs> Amen. All right, well, let's see what's playing on the, what she's got playing for us tonight. I apologize for not being on last night. Uh, had a rough day yesterday and the night before. And uh, plus I had somebody come by at the same time. We was kind of whipped out. So I apologize for not being on. But anyway, let's see what she got here. What a happy time. I'm so glad tomorrow when the day's heavy burdens down. It's home to the day. It's home to the day. No more to roam. Happy day for roam through joy and sorrow. Hoping to receive our golden crown. It's all we roam. It's all we joy and that's me. your Bible. Let's turn back to uh, the book of Genesis in chapter 6. Amen. You know, I read on the news where I read on the news where uh, our so-called president repealed the law that President Trump had passed that didn't allow transvestites in the military. I'm going to tell you what, we're in a wicked generation. We've got a wicked president, vice president. We've got a wicked House of Representatives on the Democratic side and probably some on the Republican. I mean, Washington, uh, it's like when President Trump left, all those swamp creatures just rush back in and they're not ashamed of it. 
I'm telling you, we're in bad times. But anyway, let's see what the girls have to sing, and then we'll get over to Genesis of chapter 6. Good evening, everybody. My hair is going to go. Everybody, hello. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply staying within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, or my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, the knee, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, all my heart to him. Genesis in chapter 6, I'm going to begin in verse 1. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, now these were angels, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Hold your place there for a moment. I want to go back to the book of Job, chapter 1, for just a moment. Job in chapter 1. And I want to read a reference to the Son of God there. Now, in verse 6 of Job, chapter 1. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. Now, the reverence there to the sons of God are the angels that came, and then Satan came also among them. 
And so back in Genesis chapter 6, he says in verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And that came from leaving uh, the natural place. You know, the Bible says uh, when someone dies, uh, I think the Pharisees were asking the question uh, and the Sadducees, they one didn't believe in the resurrection, the other one did. And they said, if a man has his wife and they die, whose wife will she be in the resurrection? And they said, they'd be as the angels of heaven. Well, what was that? Their first estate, they weren't to take wives. And so with all the wickedness that was going on in the world, and the sons of God, they just took the women as they chose. Amen. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repenteth me that I have made them. Look at verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Thank God that somebody found grace in the sight of the Lord back then. Thank God that Noah in that unjust generations, he walked uprightly. Amen. Now, over in the book of Luke. Over in the book of Luke. Chapter 17. And we'll begin in uh, verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto, his, unto the disciples, The days will come when you shall desire to, to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here, or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteth out of the one part under heaven, shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And then he says in verse 26, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven. And destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day... He which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. He that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. What happened to Lot's wife? Well, she looked back towards Sodom. And when she did, she turned to a pillar of salt. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you that in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. One shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together and one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Now he's dealing with Israel here. And I believe that's, in the days of 
tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, the day of the Lord. But he said, as it was in the days of Noah. Well, what was going on in Noah's day? What was going on in Lot's day? They were into uh, fornication. They were into sodomy. And you know, around the world, that's the way it is these days. I don't know of any country that has not passed a law that two men can get married or two women. Think of the abomination that, that that is. God destroyed. He'd have to he'd have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah in the cities round about for destroying them if he does not judge these countries in this world for the sodomy that's going on in them. For the filth that's out there. My wife and I were talking tonight at the dinner table about the pedophiles. Man, it's all over Washington. Amen. It's in Washington. It's in, uh, we know that it was at Disney World and Disneyland. Uh, all that filth that was going on years ago and probably still is. Uh, I mean, it's wicked. There's stealing children, making them sex slaves into all this filth and ungodliness. Why? Because the thoughts and imagination of man's heart is only evil continually. Man is wicked. Man's flesh is vile. Paul said, for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And if we don't walk in the word of God, we could be just like that. I look back at some of the men in the Bible, the patriarchs, uh, looked at some of the kings, even David and Solomon. They had sexual problems, amen. And uh, the Bible says there's no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. So if you're not in the word of God and you're not in prayer and you're not walking in the spirit, you could be in the same mess that they got themselves in at one time or another. Amen. Now, I preached years ago about the cartoons that was on TV and how they're infiltrating your children's mind and teaching them wickedness and ungodliness. Amen. And you know, it affects adults too. Some of the shows, uh, when I had the television in the rec room and I sit there and watch it, uh, every, just about every show had sexual innuendos. Every one of them. Uh, over in Romans in chapter 1. Over in Romans chapter 1. He says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doeth the same things. Listen, you might not be committing the very act of fornication or adultery or sodomy, but you might be watching it on the television. I mean, even if it's simulated. I even went back and looked at some, some uh, old Western movies. I remember one, there was a, uh, I think it was Cisco Kid, and he got shot, and the woman taking care of him was a beautiful Spanish woman, and if you remember, every show on the television always promotes Catholicism, amen? Amen. Back then, they had the father and, you know, the priest. And and uh, she was concerned about him. He wasn't getting any heat. And it showed that she was going to crawl in there on the rack with him to, to give him some heat. And she was looking for forgiveness. <laughs> hey, bet. I mean, even back then, black and white movies. Look at the way it is today. You can't stay clean and pure if you're watching TV all the time. 
if you're watching that ungodliness, you can't. I mean, it's going to affect your mind. I told you before how I would sit and watch because I like to laugh and and uh, I'd sit and watch uh, two and a half men. They had some funny one liners and all, but, you know, it was nothing but filth, nothing but filth. And God would convict me. And I knew the only way I could get away from that stuff is to get it out of my house. But the bottom line is, we've all got that wicked sin nature. And if we feed it, it'll get you in trouble. The Bible says that even though we don't do them, we have pleasure in them that do. We're just as wicked. In Romans in chapter 1, it says in verse 20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man, the birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. And that creature there is your flesh, your body than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. I tell you what, there is, I won't buy anything from McDonald's or Burger King. Number one, it's usually garbage. The only thing I like, really liked about McDonald's was they had the great biscuits and gravy, amen, and sausage. But as much as I like it, as much as I like it, I refuse to go there. What happened to the video? You know, like Dad's trying to tell you, but Dad's not paying attention. It's gone. You had 20 some people on tonight. It's dead. it's dead. So we're not on? I don't know, Frank. I don't know. We'll just keep going anyway. You still there, Brother Radish? I'm still here. Uh, this message must be for you then. No, it's dead. <laughs> it's dead, Frank. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. You reckon they knocked me off? No, I'm still on. Still on. Still okay. Okay. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And that word meat there means the error which was right, R-I-G-H-T. That's the English word for meat uh, is right. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Now look at this. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Amen. We're not to be entertained. We're not to entertain ourselves with that kind of garbage. I remember uh, the cartoons were sexually explicit as we got older. And you'd look at them and uh, your children would sit down in front of it. And subliminally, it would put these wicked thoughts into their head. And we wonder where our children are, how they got to where they are. And then you look at our government. Now, who are you going to blame for all that? You're going to blame Washington for all their filth? 
No, it's us, the church. We've lost our power. The power is still there because it's in Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. But we lost the medium that can, where he can work through us to show the world the wickedness of their hearts. But the reason we're not is because we've joined right in with it. We've grieved the Holy Ghost of God. The Christians have lost the power that they could have through the Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost. There used to be all night prayer meetings. Mothers used to get on their face and pray for their wayward children. You know how many young people we got out here uh, on hooked on drugs, living in the woods, robbing and stealing. Where's the mamas at that used to pray? I'm telling you, the mothers and the grandmothers are just as bad. They're running around with tattoos. Hey, man, I've I seen these old ladies with tattoos on that would gag a maggot off a gut wag and make a buzzer puke. I mean, I don't know what they think. They must think it looks good. But maybe they didn't look in a mirror. I heard a guy say one time that some of them women, they get in them, what's them stretch things they wear? Spandex. Look like two Volkswagen minivans trying to pass each other. I'm telling you, disgusting. The grannies don't even know how to dress these days. The mothers don't even know how to dress. No wonder we've lost our power. They can't even pray. They come to church, they're still drunks and think they're all right and drug addicts and think they're all right. I would like to apologize for Sunday though. I had the so-called Bible, the living Bible. And in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 20, I had a, a woman read it out loud. Because it said Saul boiled in his rage and said you blankety blank. But most women when they you show that to them and they start reading it. When they get to it they stop. She didn't stop. So you'll have to forgive me for messing that up. But think about where are you at with your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you got power with God? We need to get back to the old past. We need to go back to the old ways. We need to. Listen, it wouldn't hurt to get rid of, I mean, I like being on here. I like preaching. I like sharing the gospel. But you know what? We did a whole lot better when we didn't have all this Facebook and other garbage. When we didn't have all this social media and now that they got everybody hooked on it, they want to control our speech. They want to control what we can say and can't say. I mean, if if you say something derogatory about a faggot, a sodomite, hey man, they want to call it a hate crime. These are sick people. And they're the ones that are in power now in Washington. And the best thing that we can do is get on our face and pray. And get ask God to move them out. But if he doesn't, then just think about how it was in the days of Lot. How it was in the days of Noah. And that we're getting ready to get out of here so we can rejoice in that. But boy, will we have to give an account unto God for not doing our job and letting it get like this. Amen. Well, I'm done. So let's pray. Grace, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for allowing us to be on this evening. Lord, pray that you touch hearts and get people to turn. And Lord, try to be holy for thou art holy. And Lord, help us to be holy. That we might have the power on us in prayer. And help people to get on their face and pray that God would turn this thing around. Lord, if not, that folks would get saved before it's too late and you come for us. And we'll thank you for it. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and ask these things. Amen. Good night.